Welcome to the seminar series on sewer and pipeline engineering. My name is Bernd Bossler. I'm the scientific director of the IKT, Institute for Underground Infrastructure. In this session, we will be looking at open cut construction and special soil and components. And this time it is about flowable backfill material. We will remember the structural model for open construction. This includes an even bedding and support of the pipe as well as very well compacted side fill next to the pipe. If these zones are well compacted, then the vertical loads are not only carried by the pipe, but also by the soil next to the pipe. And it should be possible to transfer safely the vertical loads on the pipe into the even well compacted support. And here the question is, what do we do in narrow trenches? What do we do when pipes cross the trench? What can, we, can be done if we cannot get the compactor into the trench and into the crucial bedding zone at all? And this is precisely where flowable backfill comes into play. In this picture we see the use of a flowable backfill, also called liquid soil, to embed a gas pipeline. The technical term for these materials is for example temporarily flowable self-compacting backfill materials or TFSB. That means the material is liquid when installed and can flow completely around the pipeline. The material then hardens and can finally be built over. Over the course of its service life, however, this kind of material must not harden too much as it should easily be re-excavated, for example for later connections or repairs. Finally, the material must also be recyclable after excavation. So we see that there are four important criteria. The material is flowable, can be built over, can be re-excavated and is recyclable. Many flowable backfills also have a rather low pore volume and can also be used to protect pipes against root intrusion. This was also the case in this picture. The pipe zone was filled with flowable backfill and a tree was planted directly above it in a substrate with good root penetration properties. The root should therefore develop well, but not in the area of the pipeline. Typical components of flowable backfill are a grain structure, this can be sand or gravel, but also recycling material. We can also use the excavated soil, even if it is a bit cohesive. Then of course we need water and a binding agent, for example cement or lime. Finally, a clay mineral is used to ensure flowability and water binding that can be, for example, bentonite. And then there are other additives depending on the manufacturer. Very often all this is also referred to as a recipe for flowable backfill. Here we see different installation phases for flowable backfill. The material is delivered to the construction site in a truck mixer, for example, and then it is fiddled into the trench via a pipe extension. The drop height should not be greater than 1.5 meter to prevent segregation. The material then flows in the trench all around the pipe. To prevent the pipe from floating, it must of course be secured against buoyancy. After the material has begun to solidify, the buoyancy protection can be removed. Of course, there are many different technical possibilities for buoyancy control. Here we see a series of retaining banks made of plastic filling material. This allows a filling up to the pipe crown. Then the material must first harden before new material is added. Here we see a wooden beam structure. The cross beam is, is supported by vertical beams against the shoring. After filling over the pipe crown and the hardening of the material to begin, the shoring can be removed again. Here we see a system of the company RSS. The pipes are supported by a vertical bar against the beam on the surface. Counterweights prevent the beam from lifting off. The system can also be combined with load cells to measure the buoyancy forces. In any case, we must of course prevent the flowable backfill material from flowing away into other areas. For this reason, for example, transverse barriers of plastic material are used to confine the filling section. In case of higher filling, steel plates can also be used. And you should think about the connections and keep them properly as we can see in the picture on the right. Overall, quality assurance on the construction side plays a very important role. 
Delivery nodes must be checked and sufficient sample material should be taken directly from the truck mixer to carry out appropriate tests. The tests include, for example, the consistency of the material and also testing the strength over time using, using cube samples. The results can then be compared with the characteristic values from former performance tests. Let us now take a look at the typical applications for flowable backfill. This begins with the bedding zone, continues with the complete embedment of the pipeline zone and ends with the backfilling of the whole trench. For very large pipes, even just filling the upper bedding to support the pipe can be of interest. In deep trenches with smaller pipes, usually the whole pipe is embedded with flowable backfill since a good compaction is particularly important there. If the trenches are not as deep, for example, when laying supply lines in the sidewalk area, then even a complete backfilling of the trench with flowable material can be cost efficient. However, using flowable material for the embedment of the pipe is generally the most interesting. And we took a closer look at this case in a major research project. There we simulated all installation and loading phases from installation and removal of the shoring to cyclic loading from traffic. Here we see the experimental setup in a large scale test facility in our institute at IKT. A cast iron pipeline with a diameter of 800 mm was laid in the trench and the pipe and the trench were equipped with extensive measuring technology. The trench was 6 meters deep in total and there were 5 such trenches with an identical setup. A total of 5 different backfill materials were then installed in the different trenches. On the right we see the installation using crane buckets for the flowable material. The pipe zone was filled with this material and then the rest of the trench was filled with normal sand. The different measurement techniques we have used are listed here. Especially interesting were the results of the stress measuring foils. These foils were applied to the bottom of some pipes and they measured the stress distribution over the foil surface. As a result, the support stresses under the pipe could be compared for the different backfill materials over all load phases. And here are the results of the foil measurements. Three times common backfill materials were used and twice these special flowable fillers. In the second and fourth row we see here the results of the support reaction for the flowable materials. Already after curing and first loading it became clear that the initially liquid materials produce a very even, hardly measurable support stress. This impression even intensifies after the pulling of the shoring and after further simulation of traffic loads. These experiments have contributed much to the understanding of the system of flowable backfill and pipe. We have later carried out further tests to compare even more flowable backfill materials, but these results will be reported in another video. From a scientific point of view, it was of course interesting to find out which material models best describe the behavior of the flowable backfill. Arsic already investigated this intensively in his dissertation in 2009. It turned out that the materials can be described very well with standard models for concrete. The picture shows the yield surface of such a modified Drucker Praga model with cap in a three-dimensional graph of principal stresses. Subsequent curing or post-hardening over time is a particular problem with flowable backfill. This must be checked by means of product tests also on the construction side. There are big differences here depending on the manufacturer and mixture. The shoring should be pulled early so that the material can still flow into cavities. However, the stability of the trench must be proven for this case. And if the material has already hardened strongly, pulling the shoring can even lead to breaks on the surface. Well, for construction practice, two questions are particularly important. Number one, the possibility of later re-excavation. That means the ability to remove the material by using a simple spade, for instance. In the picture, you can see a test to determine the so-called spade resistance of the material. Here, in addition to the binder, the grain size distribution plays a significant role. 
Number two, the buoyancy control. This is crucial during installation. The construction company must know how to control the buoyancy and take this into account in the construction process. There it is for example important to find suitable elements to support the pipe during the filling process. Here we see an example for the support of a smaller pipe with a diameter of 300 mm. The plastic pipe lies on a bedding cushion made of EPS, which is expanded polystyrene. In the test, pressure measuring foils were used to check whether the pipe lies evenly in the bedding cushion and whether this remains so even under increasing vertical load. So what have we learned about flowable backfill in sewer and pipeline construction? Well, the pipe and bedding zone is particularly important in terms of statics. And flowable materials can enclose the pipe evenly and bed it well. In principle, however, many more applications are possible from partial embedment of the pipeline to complete trench backfilling. This especially in shallow trenches. Great importance lies on construction supervision. For example, the consistency of the material during filling or the strength development over time. Here, approval tests should be demanded before construction on site. In any case, flowable backfill requires special qualifications from the construction company and its personnel. One example is dealing with the issue of buoyancy and, for example, the choice of a suitable buoyancy protection during the filling process. Finally, knockout criteria can also be mentioned. These are the basic expectations of a flowable backfill. They must be fulfilled in any case so that the material can be used in sewer and pipeline construction. And these are the flowability during installation, the curing and stability to secure further construction above it, then the re-excavation properties even after a longer period of time, and of course the recyclability so that we can easily dispose of the material later. Thank you.